Hey, good morning. All right, here we go. Uh, man, there's things you gotta understand. Here, uh, look. <laughs> you know, I, I study a lot, right? Number one. Um, I've been drawn towards him. And, and the verses that he's giving me, he's giving me. He's leading me to them, right? I'm not... I'm not looking for specific things, and as I'm going through the verse, I don't even know what it's going to say. I've begun to recognize certain numbers and know what those words mean. But other than that, I, I really have, you know, I read things in their context, obviously, and, um, but there's spiritual meaning behind every verse, and it's right there in front of our faces if you bother to study his word. So... Anyways, I just want to put that out there, that I'm not picking these verses. And the order that he's showing me things is, is, a, is a sequence of events. He's showing me a sequence of events that are occurring. As they occur, <laughs> as they are occurring, which is just shows exactly, it glorifies him, shows exactly how in control he actually is of everything. And then, then he, even after I go over these verses, he'll confirm them to me through other brothers and sisters' channels or through something I watch or something I hear, uh, you know, on the radio or in music or, or a newscast or uh, another brother or sister's channel, and he confirms his word. It, it's just amazing. It's, it's miraculous. It really is. All right, so this verse here, it's a short one. It's... Uh, you know, one day it's like it's like twenty something degrees and snowing and windy. Then the next day it's like fifty. <laughs> Michigan. Anyways, this is Psalms thirty-four, verse seventeen. Okay, first I'll read it the way we'll see it. Most of the Bibles then take every word back to its origin using the lexicons and the Strongs, and we'll get a much more clear understanding. And uh, like I said, there's the, the spiritual is being played out in this physical. Okay. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. It's a great verse, right? It's great. And it's the truth. No doubt about it. But let's get some details here. When we go back, because the Greek and Hebrew language was, were uh, pictographic languages. So let's go through the lexicons and the strongs for each word and see, see what what all the details are, which is just amazing revelation, spiritual revelation here. Okay, Psalms 34, 17. The righteous gather together and cry out for help in distress, which is being pulled apart by extreme anxiety and sorrow and pain, or suffering caused by a lack of, of money or basic necessities for life. Jehovah, the self-existent and eternal God, who came into being as a beacon and broke the cause of the fall of oneself, the fall of ourselves, and caused us to breathe properly, to breathe properly with the breath of life from above, right? And this is in Psalms. This is in Psalms. Okay. He listens and understands and hears the case as judge to be obeyed and to summon Whosoever heareth, who, he heals our deafness and blindness, right? Um, so uh, he summons whosoever that heareth as a witness to deliver and rescue, to strip off the spoil, the spoil. And uh, in the Latin, that, that means to, to plunder the skin. That means to strip off this flesh as the flesh of an animal or, a, you know, like we're the beast of burden. We are the image of the beast. This flesh is a fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil when we're birthed into this physicality, this physical dimension that we're trapped in by time and place, this physical world, okay? And that's why we have to be born again. And the spirit grafted back into the tree of life through Christ, his only begotten son, who is God incarnate. By being born again in the spirit, then we become a new fruit from that tree. Okay, so... That's very important. So, um, to strip off the flesh is stripped from an animal, a beast of burden, this sheep that has went astray, which is what we are, and is on our condemnation of sin and guilt by 
being birthed into this physicality. Okay, it is a mark. And, and then here's, here's something, you know what, I'll go over this in a second. But, so, this is to rescue and strip off the spoil. Right? And this is to recover us from our enemies or recover from death because we're in a condition, a fallen state, which is condemned here to death. We are in a separation from the source of all creation and life when we were birthed into this world. We're in a condition of death. Okay, so he delivers from our enemies and death to deliver, to deliver us from sin and guilt to be plucked out. Here's the rapture right here to be plucked out to escape and preserve us out of trouble. And this word trouble is uh, H6869, and it mean, there's a whole lot of meaning here. So this word trouble of a vexer, it says. So to preserve us out of trouble of a vexer, and that is one who uh, irritates and bothers and annoys and frustrates us, causes perplexity in matters, and baffles the baffling wind. This is Satan and the demonic entities that are, are here with him. Um, perplexity in and baffles and teases and mocks us. A rival, it can be a rival wife, a rival wife, transitively, which means to go across and transition, passing over to. So we passed over and affecting something else, which affects something else. When we're passed over, when we pass over to this realm of the flesh, uh, we're afflicted and mocked, and everything is. There's a tr transitively to go across and transition, right? And it affects something else. It affects our soul, our spirit, by being covered in this flesh. Uh, it, it, it blocks the light, the truth, okay? Uh, and it's also a female rival. It also means, this time of trouble means a female rival or an adversary that brings adversity and affliction and anguish and distress and tribulation. This brings tribulation and trouble when we're here. It is the oppressor, the oppressor and enemy and enemy to bind us and shut up and shut up as an adversary, to shut us up as an adversary. So, so that word is 6869, which goes back to the origin of 6862, which goes back to the origin of 6887. And all those are in Hebrew, because this is the Old Testament written mainly in Hebrew. Okay, so there's that verse, a lot more clarity. But when I was looking up spoil, check this out. This is, this is some amazing revelation. He's telling us right where we are. Okay, when I looked up spoil, it means to, in the Latin, it's to plunder the skin, to strip off the flesh as an animal, a beast, a burden, right? That's what I, it didn't say beast, of burden, but it says as an animal, and I know where the beast, the image of the beast, the beast, of burden, this flesh, these bodies that are idols, especially an idol. In Genesis 126, that word image means a phantom, an illusion, uh, a shadowy figure, especially an idol, a vain show. That's the word, what churches are teaching us wrong, and I don't know why, because it's, it's right there in every single Bible. It's right there. All they have to do is take it back to its origin, origin, you know, in the Hebrew, and they'll see it. So, anyways, um, this word spoil in the British, and this, this is amazing because he led me right to this. Um, it means a mark, to mark a ballot, a paper ballot. It means to mark a paper ballot incorrectly as to make one's vote invalid as a protest to prevent one from enjoying an occasion or event. <laughs> okay, so what's going on here in this country? Uh, okay, I was led right to this, and this is part of it. When you look up the word spoil, just Google it, spoil. <laughs> and look it up in the Latin, you know, to strip the flesh, to strip away the flesh. And in the British definition, it's marking a paper ballot incorrectly. And what's occurred? <laughs> uh, and it takes uh, in one away from enjoying an occasion or event as a protest, right? It makes one's vote invalid. Okay. The spiritual is definitely being played out in the physical. There's no doubt about it. He's revealing everything now. Um, it's all right there. It's all right there. Um, and he's leading me to these verses. I'm not searching for them. I'm not looking for them. I mean, 
you know, I am studying and watching other brother, and but I, like I said, I feel his spirit when he comes upon me. You know, I feel that tingling all throughout my body. You know, it's like an electrical charge. He energizes you, right? And I can feel it. So there's that verse. And the next verse I'm going over is even more. Uh, it's it's going to tell us exactly, exactly what's about to happen. What's about to happen. It doesn't say exactly when, but this verse right here is right where we are now. So it's right where we're at right now. And the other verse I went over said, at this very moment, we're, we're right on that edge right now of eternity. So understand that. You have to make an affirmative decision. Where do you belong? In God's kingdom, where we originated, or in this kingdom that Satan was given rule over? Which one do you love? What God are you serving? The God of this world? At the moment, at the moment, because this time is short. Or our Heavenly Father in Christ who came here and died for us to show us the way back home through his death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, got to make a decision, man. Where do you want to be? You have to make it. You can't be double-minded. You can't be on the fence. That's lukewarm. That's lukewarm. Don't do it. All right. Love and respect everybody as best you can. It's getting difficult, more and more difficult. I know as this world gets continues, more people are turning and being possessed or heavily, more heavily influenced by, by demonic entities that are all around us. And if you're not born again in the spirit, they, they can really influence your mind. And that's what they do. That's what they do. Uh, you, because you believe that you've been given over to the strong delusion. You've been given over to the strong delusion of what, what we are, what this world's about. You love the things of this world. You love it. And don't, don't, Twist my words there. I understand we're in the world, but not of the world. But where do you want to be? Where do you belong? Where is your heart? All right. God bless. Have a great day. Bye.